Hey everybody, Jim Tedesco here with Millennium County Railroad version 2.0. And we got another mail call. Got a lot of those lately, so I want you guys to see this one because I'm kind of excited about it too. So stay tuned, let me reposition the camera and we'll have at it. Alright, we got two things here. This one's not that big of a deal. Gotta be careful cutting it though. Oh. They put it in a little, uh, uh, yeah, protective cardboard. Alrighty, here we go. Oh, and then I got it in that envelope to boot. <laughs> This is, and you really can't tell if there's railroad, railroad graphics. So I'm going to be needing a lot of those because they're going to have several, several roads and highways passing over the tracks. So that'll come in handy when the time comes. I think I bought the uh, highways and byways. I also got these, the highways and byways uh, lane striping. I got yellow and I got white. So... Good stuff, the highways and byways. Okay, that was the that was the little thing. Hey, thank God for eBay. <laughs> I spent more money on eBay than I know what to do with. But you know, you seem to have a lot of stuff, and most of the time it's re pretty reasonably priced. So I'm not complaining. But anyway, let's get on to the. The major thing here. Oh, I can't stand up today. Hey, yesterday I took a day off. I wasn't feeling that good. You know, every now and then I'll get a day like that where I just feel like crap. I guess that's my uh, my signal to take a day off. But today we got to get back into it. All right, we got lots of packing material as always. Now I put this stuff in the trash. I generate more trash in this house than, than we do in, in, the, in the main house. And we got lots of stuff in here. I don't know what all this stuff is. Let's get to the important part first. <laughs> okay, now this is from Rapido Trains. And these are the turnout switches and uh, signal, signal stands. They do a good job of packing this stuff, don't they? I got, like I said, I got 12 of them. There's another, there's probably six in each box. These things are really cool. They're probably the next best thing to the, uh, the tortoises. I can't get it out of the box. <laughs> Come out of the box. <laughs> yeah, how do you open the box? <laughs> but hey, I feel like a complete doofus today. A complete doofus. We got stuff. Right. We have components for the actual switch stands, I believe, for the linkages. But basically, what you're getting here, if you get through all the, the packing materials, you need a little switch motor right here. It actually goes down in the, you pour a one and an eighth inch hole, drop it down in there. Here's your power connectors. 
and put that right back in the box. It also comes with a momentary dual action switch. So you basically you got everything you need here to uh, Take care of your turnout uh, turnout switches, turnout machines in that box. Now, here, this also came in here. Like I said, these may be the stands. I'm not sure. I bet you they are. These these are included with it. I actually think they're probably. garbage here. Yep, switch stand kit. So these, these are pretty cool too. They come with the different uh, metal plates. They're brass plates you can put on there. That's pretty cool stuff. When I'm ready to put some of these things in, I'll be sharing a video of the whole... We'll do a whole video on the whole process. It ought to be pretty cool. So this is, like I said, it was two hundred and seventeen dollars for twelve of them, and I thought, yeah, it was kind of pricey, but probably not any worse than the tor tortoises are, because I think they run. I think these are running like twenty-two dollars each. And I think the tortoise switch machines, depending where you go. You can get them between eighteen and twenty-two dollars each, because I've seen them as low as eighteen. But of course, they don't come with switch stands either. So I think that's what really, for me, that's the kicker. That's what really, that's what really is. I got, I got excited about it because I'm thinking, wow, that's really cool. I mean, this is a representation on the back there. I don't know if you can see that too well. Of what? The finish stand could look like. I mean, it doesn't have working lights, but I mean, I suppose I could put them in if I really wanted to. I don't know if I'll go that far yet or not. But that's the mail call. <laughs> and yesterday I got. I didn't bother to do it because I didn't think it was worth turning the camera on for. But I got the. Railroad crossings, I got a uh, 45 degree and two 25 degrees. And that's going to go over there where my cluster you know what is. <laughs> so, it looks like it'll be fine too. It looks like it should just lay right in there. So, we'll see how that goes. Also got the third bridge. <laughs> oh yeah. Let me take this off the stand a minute. Hang on just a second. Alright, now we're, well, we're freestanding again. I got the bridge. This is a 42 inch bridge. And I'm actually not going to use it for trains. I'm going to use this for the highway. And I mean, it's a little bit different. It looks like it might actually be more suitable. If I can yeah, get a good shot of this somewhere. Looks like it'd be more suitable for uh, traffic, uh, car traffic, automobile traffic, whatever. So that's going to go right over here, which of course there's going to be a little town under here, but that's going to go on the top, closest to the edge of the table. And of course that bridge, as you've already seen, will be going over there. So. And I've still got my gray bridge. Trying to get my tunnel in place. I still got to get the lights plugged in yet. So I don't want to go too much further that until I get the electric electrical hookup in. And oh, just stop for a minute. Uh, <laughs> it's rough getting old. Let me tell you. So and of course I got to make a, a a mountain scene out of that anyway. Once it's once it's laid in there, and get that that out of the way. Ooh, 
Uh, I started on, I did put some track in, I think I already went over that in the back. But I went ahead and started laying out the rest of the road bed. Road bed. And I've got most of the road bed in along the uh, along this side of the, uh, the shed on the lower level. Anyway, I didn't start on the upper level yet, but there's there's a lot there. So the next step will be, of course, on this side and the swing gate. I think I started. I put one. One small piece in the swing gate already. So there, there, there's so much to do, and it's going to be very time consuming. And I'm not in a hurry anyway. So, uh, Dave Thurber, if you're, if you're watching this, you may wind up pulling ahead of me yet, yet again. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking anyway. I've also got a bunch of stuff I'm going to have to print on the 3D printer. I, uh, I found one of my old tunnel portals that I printed up. This one right here. But I'm going to make some new ones I believe. So pretty soon I'm going to be doing that. Also I found another uh, a better file for the um, track bumpers. As you, most of you know I, I, I was printing track bumpers before and I wasn't impressed with them. They were okay, but they just weren't quite up to par. So I said, you know, I, I got to find something better. So I did some hunting around on the internet. And that's exactly what I did. I found some better ones. If you wonder what I'm doing with the camera, I'm putting it back on a tripod. There we go. There we go. So... I got a better hair day today, too, by the way. <laughs> it's not quite as bad as it was last time. So good hair day. Well, sort of. It's still up there at the back, though, isn't it? <laughs> Everybody should have such problems, right? Uh, yeah, I, I'll get goofy here. Probably, probably the pink fumes, right? <laughs> no. Uh... I haven't started laying any more track yet. I'm probably going to wait a while before I start laying more track. And I'm going to solder it probably after it's in. Now the back section I soldered in already because it's going to be covered by the tunnel. So I don't want to have to fool with it later. So that's, there's three pieces of flex track there. That's three, six, nine feet. And they are soldered together so we're good to go. Uh, since the rest will be out in the open, I can, I can solder it as I go or afterwards or whatever. So, and I don't think I'm going to solder everything, but I'm going to solder a lot of it, and that will help lessen the need for a lot of drops. Because I'm thinking one drop on the back wall, one drop on the left side, over there where the, where the valley is, another drop where this valley is, actually on either side of the valley, a drop over here, and then one, two, three, three or four uh, feet of drops on the right hand side. And of course there will also be a, a main drop for the uh, swing gate too. That's for lower level. The upper level is a whole different deal. Uh, I'm going to have to figure out how I want to do my drops for that. It shouldn't be too big of a deal. I'll probably have three on the right side, two on the back side, and one, well there'll be a whole bunch of them over here because there's going to be a lot of a lot of turnouts and I don't know if I'm going to have to solder in separate wires for them or what. Uh, they're all they're all DC friendly and I'm buying their insel frogs from Pico. So I shouldn't have any issues with them. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Plus, also have the turntable up here, and there's going to be several uh, tracks. And I'm thinking that I might um, put up a roundhouse too. Not sure. I mean, I got room for it, so I probably will. Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed. There's another. There's another uh, trained guy out there. His name is Steve Childers. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. 
check out his channel. And uh, he just got through. He did a three-part series on his roundhouse. Did a nice job. So, as a matter of fact, I just subscribed to him because I was really impressed. I can thank Rick Bailey for that one. And if you don't watch Rick Bailey, check his channel out too. It's, um, I can't remember what it's called now. But <laughs> Uh, stop, slots, shots, shots, valley, I don't know, something like that. I'll put it down in the link below. But, <laughs> I know, I'm so bad with this stuff. I'm telling you, it's rough getting old. But, uh, check those guys out, and, you know, you might learn something. You might not, I don't know. <laughs> I'm hoping you learn something for me, too, but who knows. Um. Like I said, this is like, what, the 10th rebuild I've done, I think, in the last, what, 13 years? <laughs> it's going to be the last two, by the way. Uh, and that's why I'm really taking more time with this. I'm not in a hurry. Uh, it may seem like I am, but I'm not. Um, and there, there's a whole lot of things that have to be done. I mean, a whole lot of things. Playing the track is, is the easy part. And you've got buildings and lighting. And road work, I bought, I, I can't get to it right now, but I bought some sheet styrene. I got, uh, I think it's 10 sheets or 20 sheets, I don't remember, it's 10 or 20 sheets. They're 12 by 24. And I'm going to use that for my roadways. So, of course, we're not ready for that yet, but I've got it. And as I said, I've also got the striping from highways and byways. Uh, and there's still things I probably, oh, there's many things I need to buy. I mean, there's just so much stuff that needs to be done. And of course, you know, you got scenery. Um, I'm going to have to buy a whole boatload of trees. <laughs> I mean, I got some, but some of the stuff I got is not that great looking. And as a matter of fact, they still have the trees that I want from uh, Dave Thurber, Crooked River and Eastern. Um, they're still in the box, actually. I mean, I took them out to look at them when I first got them, but I put them back in the box, and they've been sitting in the box all this time. It's been over a year. Uh, maybe closer to two. I'm not sure. Um, and I may talk to him about purchasing some. I mean, if he's willing to sell any, I don't know. Because uh, I'll tell you, there's not much out there for ready-made stuff. I looked around on the internet and all the different, uh, you got Woodland Scenics, you've got uh, TT Tops or something like that. I, they got all these different makers that, that make this stuff. And yeah, some of it's nice, but they want crazy money for it. You know, you get a cold day in hell before I pay 30 bucks for a tree. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's that big. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, it looks nice and all, but no, it's not worth that much. And, and I may make some more of my own as well, but because uh, I got lots to work with out here, there's a lot of uh, brush out there that I can I can utilize, so I shouldn't have any problem producing decent trees. So let's see, is there anything else? No, I think that's about it. I don't want to drag this out too long because uh, you know it's it's easy to get bored with these videos if they're too long. And I understand that, but you know, sometimes you just can't help it. I mean, I, yeah, I could do a two-minute video, but I'd have to do a hundred of them. I don't want to do that. <laughs> anyway, th I gained two subscribers, by the way, this week. Thanks, guys, for subscribing, and I hope more watch and subscribe. Uh, remember, I'm doing this for fun. I'm not monetized, and I have no plans to be. And I do this for so I can document my progress, as well as show all you rest of you enthusiasts that how I'm doing it. Maybe you'll learn something from me or maybe you'll come up with a better idea and throw it at me and that I could do something better. So, But that's why I do this. I'm not doing this for money. Uh, for those who do, that's fine. I got no issue with it, but I'm, I'm not that dedicated to the channel to really want to get to the point where I want to make money with. And I don't have the subscriber base. I think I'm up to like 254 subscribers now. I mean, some of you guys got 20,000. 
<laughs> you know, that's cool, but, you know, I said, I'm not worried about it. So anyway, I'm rambling again, so. Uh, before I close, there's one other thing that I wanted to talk about briefly. Uh, as you guys know, I moved from Naples to Sebring. And I just found out that my fellow train uh, hobbyist, Tom from Tom's Trains and Things, he moved up here too. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I'm going to go see him for the first time this Thursday, a couple days from today. And we'll discuss each other's layouts and maybe I can learn a few things from him. But it's just kind of funny. So at least I've got a fellow railroader up here in Sebring. And the Steve Child, he's in South Florida somewhere. I don't know where. So more and more people are, are getting into the hobby down here, which of course is a good thing. So <laughs> I just wanted to say that. And if you haven't subscribed or checked him out, Tom's Trains and Things, check him out. He's, he's a great guy. He always has some great ideas. All right, like back to it what I was doing. <laughs> One more thing, and I promise I'll be it. <laughs> Sorry, this thing is taking so long, guys. There's just so much to talk about. March 30th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, I will be the guest host on On Track Tuesday with Dave Thurber, or Wilmer, or whoever's actually, actually hosting. I'm not sure. But I will be there, so please tune in, and you can see what I'm doing in real life. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> Thanks, guys. That's it, I promise. As always, keep it on the rails. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye for now.